You're about to listen to Kelly Martin Speaks. I'm your host, Kelly, and the author of When Everyone Shines But You, a mental health and self-acceptance blogger and a recovering darkness addict. I have experienced intense anxiety, deep depression and life trauma, but I'm coming out of the other side now. Darkness was a comfort zone for me for a long time, and it felt safer than the light. So in this podcast, I share with you my journey into the light and how I move through challenge in an empowering way. I'll share with you tools and nurturing ways to embrace your humanity. I was once a shy, scared introvert, afraid to speak, but that's all changing. Let's take this journey together and learn to fly. Hi there, welcome back to Kelly Martin Speaks. I'm your host, Kelly Martin, and this is episode 70. Today I'm going to talk about how when we finally find our voices, share who we really are, how we may come across people in pain who may want to lash out at us. This year I finally started to say what was on my mind sharing my opinions, my alternative viewpoints. And in many ways, I became more unpopular. Not that I was ever really popular anyway. But I would go so far to say that people actually really started to dislike me. Now, in the past, I would have crumbled in the face of this. I would have done what I could to please them. In my people-pleasing days, I was just always doing what I thought other people wanted. But not anymore. I'm learning that we can't please all people all of the time, and it's not our job to please them anyway. Now, with the world in a state of flux right now, we've got politics and there is anger in abundance in many countries, rightly so. There are people standing up to be counted. And on social media, it's like there is a dramatic meltdown daily by large numbers of people. And whatever our view or opinion that has been expressed, alternative viewpoints, it's interesting to say the least what is happening and how we get responses from others and how we respond to others too. Now this week, after posting a positive short message on Twitter, now if you're not familiar with Twitter, it's a social media network where you're only limited to a, I think it's, is it 250 characters per tweet? So you can't really write a lot. And I, I did a little short message on Twitter about something that's taking place in the UK and that's Brexit, where we decide whether the UK stays or leaves the European Union. Now, we're not leaving Europe, we're still part of Europe, but many of us want to leave the European Union for many different reasons. And there's a hashtag on Twitter called Brexit, and I saw so many negative tweets. In fact, the whole stream of hashtag Brexit was full of impending doom, full of anger, rage, criticism of those of us who voted to leave. And I got so frustrated by it. I was so tired by it looking at it. It was just, it was like, it was like people were just in severe panic over a lot of what they were reading on the media which was basically deliberately whipping all the the energy up. And it was quite horrifying to see this the lack of any type of positive slant on Brexit. So I decided to post a, a short message that was more positive. And... As there were very few positive tweets, I tweeted about change, potential, that even though change can be challenging, it's essential at times. 
And a few moments later, I received a really long email from someone who voted to remain in the European Union. This woman actually took time out of her day to write me a long email personally via from my tweet, my very short tweet, and scream and shout at me in an email. And also she used an email address that was secret, so I couldn't reply. At first I wondered, did she have serious mental health issues because of the language used and how the writing went off into a tangent about investments, working in a shop, the porn industry and more. To summarise, she pretty much believes all Leave voters are much like the propaganda put out into, into the media, that we are all brainless, stupid, money-hungry idiots who are maybe so rich we can choose Brexit. Well, like many of you who may have been following me for some time, you'll know that money's not really something that comes easy to me. I'm still working on it. I've experienced poverty in my life right now and also I get support from the government while things are a bit more challenging. So I just about get by, so I know that none of what she said was true, but that's not the point of this podcast episode. The point is when... People are in pain. They may internalise it or they may externalise it. And instead of dealing with that pain or fear, they project it out into the nearest person, be it a loved one or a stranger on social media, a group, an idea. And social media is rife with this. Social media has given everyone a voice. Even if that voice lashes out in pain and doesn't care if it hurts anyone out there at all. And I understand reacting to someone who has attacked you, but to react to someone who is sharing a positive slant on an ongoing challenge taking place. My mind just literally boggled. I was gobsmacked when I read this email. However, let's get clear about this. Even... A supportive or positive message can be taken the wrong way by someone in pain. If someone is extreme in their views, no matter how rational or irrational it may seem to us, even someone trying to share a little light in the world can be seen as an attack on their right to be who they are. My message, albeit well-meaning and simply wanting to bring an alternative viewpoint on an otherwise angry flood of messages, was seen as a threat and, because I was not using the right words, saying what they wanted to see, it, it probably was seen as sarcasm or, or silly nonsense. I get this. When I've been in my most depressive states in my life, when depression had me at the lowest point, when I felt suicidal, if someone brought a positive slant my way, I, I wanted to hit them. I wanted to tell them to go away, probably in more fierce words than that. So I get that this woman was hurt and in pain and saw the mere possibility of another viewpoint was damaging and ing aggressive in her eyes. It doesn't mean it's the way to go, uh, to attack anyone who triggers us, but she did nonetheless. If we can empathise with those who lash out, we can come to a better understanding of who we are too. If anyone in your life is lashing out and you feel whatever you have done or said has been totally misunderstood, try and consider if what you said or did trigger them and know it is nothing to do with you and everything to do with them and an unhealed pain they are unprepared to face. Now I know that I've done my fair share of overreacting in my life. I, I still do from time to time. I can get triggered incredibly if someone is throwing insults my way and I have been known to be a bit of a keyboard warrior myself in response. I am slowly learning to step away from the keyboard and share what I need to and 
ignore who is personally attacking me. When we are under attack verbally and ready to retaliate or defend our position, the first thing we can do is ask, before this person pushed my button, which one of their buttons might I have pushed? And secondly, is it worth responding? I find most of the time it truly isn't worth responding. Let other people be right. Let them have the flaw. Let them feel justified. Let them work through their anger and walk away. Or if you are on social media, push the mute button or block button. The only reason we resist walking away is because our ego also wants to be right. We want to put them down, punish them, or, you know, for daring to misjudge us or misunderstand who we are or what we meant. In a way, we are in our own self-made prison when we feel we need to retaliate through words or physically time and time again. We allow anger and rage and pain to rule us instead of stopping, questioning, taking a deep breath and asking, is there any point in doing this? When we are attacked and people lash out, instead of winding ourselves up into a knot, thinking we should have said this or that or we should have done this differently, and we even go so far as rehearse our next battle with them and what we would like to do and say. Instead of doing this, we stop. We breathe and we self-validate. We speak to ourselves. We support who we are. And we learn to let it all go. Maybe not straight away, but eventually once the dust has settled, we do this. When this woman attacked me via email, I was kind of glad that she had a secret email because my keyboard warrior could have easily replied and retaliated. I could have easily taken her apart, piece by piece. I could have destroyed her from an ego sense. But what good would that have done me or her? She was angry, she was hurting, she was in pain in deep fear, and needed an outlet. I was that outlet. How many of us have felt like this? I know I have. We're all human, and after all, to say we never lash out or retaliate or get triggered, it's a lie. We all do. Some of us may be learning how to change our ways, but it doesn't make us any better for understanding this more. It just means we are prepared to find peace and whatever anyone does with their lives and their self-expression is a completely personal experience and is their responsibility, not mine and not yours. My responsibility is to learn what I can, change if able and understand. It's all we can ever do really. And I always liked the beautiful prayer by St. Francis, which really spoke to me about how we respond and the choices we can make in life. And this this is what it says. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offence, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring your light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O Master, Let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. 
For it is in the giving that one receives. It is in self-forgetting that one finds. It is in pardoning that one is pardoned. It is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. I'm learning, albeit slowly, that as a human being, it is far more freeing to learn to understand than to try to force people to understand me. My job is to understand me. Nobody else should have this responsibility. Thanks for listening to another episode of Kelly Martin Speaks. If you have a question or topic you are struggling with and would like me to answer on an upcoming podcast episode, please get in touch. Your name will be confidential. Email me at kellymartinspeaks at gmail.com or message me on Facebook via my page Kelly Martin Speaks. And don't forget if you feel that others are passing you by and the not good enough voice is screaming loudly, pop by kellymartin.co.uk to find out all about my books, including book one, When Everyone Shines But You. And don't forget, you can support me via PayPal in a one-off payment or monthly. Pop by kellymartinspeaks.co.uk and look at my mental health podcast page and support me there. Until next time, bye for now. You've been listening to my podcast, Kelly Martin Speaks. I'd really appreciate your feedback. If you're listening on iTunes, please give me a review. It helps me be seen and heard by those that need it. You can also follow me on kellymartinspeaks.co.uk where you can read my blogs, find out about my book series and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. I'm also all over social media. So search for me via Kelly Martin Speaks on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I'll speak to you next week. Bye.